Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is DIY, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Android benchmarks on the Asus Tinkerboard as promised. Now, I could have just put the scores up for the Tinkerboard, but that's a little boring. Um, I wanted to kind of give you something to compare it to. So I happened to use a Google Pixel phone for my work phone, which obviously is an Android phone. It's probably one of the better, if not one of the best, probably soon to be dethroned by the Samsung Galaxy S8 um, as far as Android devices go. So I want to say right off, so no one gets confused or concerned, I am not comparing the Tinkerboard directly to the Pixel in like a battle or a clash or anything like that. I am taking the Pixel's benchmarks to kind of show you kind of the highest, one of, some of the highest scores that are achievable right now on an Android device on these benchmarks and showing you where the Tinkerboard is falling against those so that you get an idea of how the Tinkerboard is performing. Because if you look at just numbers from the Tinkerboard, you're not gonna have an idea of like, well, is that a good score? Is that a bad score? What's up? So that's why that's happening there. Another thing to keep in mind is that this Android release from Asus for the Tinkerboard is still the beta release. So we may see some fluctuations after the final release is finally out. And I'll do a follow-up benchmark to see if there are improvements with that. Um, but I just want to put that out there. This is still the beta release. There could be some discrepancies as time goes on. And then just in case you haven't seen other benchmark videos by me, my testing methodology is that I run each benchmark test three times on each device, and then I average those three scores together to get the result score that you'll see in the charts coming up. But speaking of those scores, why are we wasting time? Let's jump right in and take a look. First up was Geekbench 4. One thing with the fourth version was that they optimized it for 64-bit processors and the rock chip on the Tinkerboard is 32-bit. So that may account for the lower than average score of 802 on the single core score, followed by 1980 on the multi-core. We then saw a score of 1675 for the compute score. Now, with these results, I'm fairly certain then that the Geekbench scores that were published by ASUS on their site were in fact run through Geekbench 2 on Tinker OS, but that's just my inference um, and just kind of something I noticed based on numbers I've seen. Moving on to AND22, a requested benchmark, the Tinkerboard scored an overall score of 52,234, which is a mid-range score in comparison to other devices. And 22 goes deep into graphical benchmarks where the Tinkerboard scored 10,203 for the 3D test, 19,904 for UX, 18,179 for the CPU, and finally 3,914 for the RAM. The Tinkerboard has 2 gigs of RAM compared to the Pixel's 4 gigs of RAM, so I was happy with that ratio discrepancy. Seems right on target. For the graphics, I have a theory that it's being affected by driver support and the beta release of Android here. I think we'll see better results for graphics benchmarks in general once the final release is made available for the Tinkerboard. I decided to run the 3D Mark graphics benchmarks for Android, tipping my hat to desktop graphics card benchmarks. The Android benchmarks from 3D Mark come in two flavors, Slingshot and Ice Storm, with Slingshot being the newer and higher resolution test. For Slingshot, there is a 1440p version that can run both on screen and off screen, with off screen being referred to as unlimited. There is also a 1080p version that can run in both ways as well. The Tinkerboard seemed to get tired very easily with Slingshot and was kind of chugging at a lot of points, showing scores of 496 for 1440p on screen, 510 1440p off screen, 679 for 1080p on screen, and 645 for 1080p off screen. You'll see though that the Pixel, although obviously higher, doesn't exactly build its test out of the water comparatively. Again, I'll be curious to see what final release with full driver support will show for graphics. Because if you'll remember, if you've watched my Raspberry Pi versus Tinkerboard benchmarks, which were all based in Linux, we were seeing issues with the graphics drivers that were holding back a lot of the benchmarks. So I'm fairly certain that's what's happening with this Android release as well. In the lower spec Ice Storm benchmark, which has an on-screen 1080p, on-screen 720p, and off-screen 720p versions, the scores were definitely better, with scores of 7,973 for 1080p, 11,119 for on-screen 720p, and 12,194 for off-screen 720p. Again, 
drivers, drivers, drivers. Only time will tell if these are true scores, and you'll see that the pixel was just showing off at this point. I also took a look at the PC Mark benchmarks. I tried to run Work 2.0, but the Tinkerboard kept freezing at one of the video editing tests at the highest resolution, which is about halfway through a set of tests, so I had to stick with Work 1.0. For those unfamiliar, Work tests just that. Work. Web browsing, document editing, photo editing, video editing, etc. The Tinkerboard scored 3,880 on this test. I also ran Computer Vision in the PC Mark suite. It's basically an AI benchmark for image processing. The Tinkerboard uh, got uh, 1,867 in this test. This may be useful for those considering any AI applications with this board. Now, last but certainly not least, I ran Octane 2.0 again, this time in Google Chrome. The Tinkerboard scored 5,122, which is actually a bit lower than what it scored in Chromium on Tinker OS. On Tinker OS, it scored 6,892. Now, there are a number of factors for this, mainly I think operating system version and the architecture of said operating system, but also driver support and browser conditions definitely play a factor, but still interesting to note. Now to wrap things up, I was able to find some Rock Chip and Snapdragon benchmarks that are from different devices to see what we should expect from each chip on average. I will link these articles below, but for the tests I ran, you can see that the Tinkerboard and the independent Rock Chip benchmarks are very close with the Tinkerboard sometimes beating it out, or vice versa. Of note, supporting my theory that better driver support later will help with graphical performance, you'll see that the Rock Chip benchmark is about 30,000 higher than the Tinkerboard for Ice Storm Unlimited. And then just to round out the story, here's a comparison of my Pixel benchmarks to the independent Snapdragon benchmarks. You'll see that there are similar ranges to the Tinkerboard versus Rock Chip benchmarks in the tests I ran. So I think overall we're seeing the Asus Tinkerboard perform as expected on Android with the mid-range hardware that it has, with the exception of graphics. I really think those scores could be higher, especially if we look at those stock rock chip benchmarks and that 30,000 point discrepancy with the Ice Storm benchmark. I, I really think the driver support just isn't quite there yet and that as soon as that full release of Android comes from Asus that's no longer beta, I think we'll really see some improvements and I'm excited to experience that. But speaking of graphics, I do have one more set of benchmarks kind of planned for the Android distro at this time, and that is gaming. If there's any Android games that you'd like to see on the Tinkerboard benchmarked, let me know down in the comments below. The suggestion for that actually came from comments, so I do read them, I do take suggestions, so feel free to reach out and let me know. Um, but overall, I have to say, still the Android distro, even though it's just beta for the Tinkerboard, it runs really smoothly and I'm really enjoying it. Um, there's really no hiccups or anything like that. Um, it's just a really smooth experience. You'd never know that it was a beta version, first of all, of an OS and let alone that on a little single, single board computer. So um, really good experience so far. But that's all for this video. If you like to toss me those thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Find me on social media, links are down in the description. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.